uh, speaking to you out of the, the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John and the fifth chapter. And uh, I'm calling your attention to verse 24. The Gospel of John, fifth chapter, and verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Hallelujah. Lord God, we, we just thank you, Father God, for, for this, this profound statement in the Bible that comes from your heart. Hallelujah. Lord God, your word says that he that believes on the Father and the Son hath everlasting life. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that by confessing Christ, and repenting of our sins and calling on the name of Jesus. We were born of your spirit. Hallelujah. And Lord God, because we are born of your spirit, we have become the sons of God. We are the children of God. Lord God, you said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. And all things are of God. We thank you for this new life in Jesus Christ. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to open our understanding. Touch our spirit. Give us insight. Give us light. Give us understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. John, the fifth chapter. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me, Hath, hath everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Hath. Think I'll uh, focus on that. Verily, verily, I say unto, unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, this is the word that I want to concentrate on. Hath. You have it. You have received it. You got it. Amen. There's one scripture in the Bible that says, uh, hold on to eternal life. Amen. Cling to eternal life. You've got it. Amen. You've been blessed of God. And since God has blessed you and brought you this far, amen, hold on to the blessing. Amen. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Take a look at 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the third verse. Uh, let's start at verse 1. I'm, I'm tempted to start at, uh, at the 4th chapter and the 17th verse, uh, and I think I will. Uh, going a little off, off, uh, off schedule, but I just, I just can't resist this, this 17th verse. For our light affliction, 
which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. You might say temporary. The things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, amen, and all these, all these shells, all these bodies, all of these earthly tabernacles, speaking about your human body, amen, all of them will decay, amen, ashes to ashes, we say it at every funeral, ashes to ashes, and talking about this body, amen, praise the Lord. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't wait till I put on put on that new body. Amen. Amen. I want to move into my new house. Amen. The old house, sometimes it springs a leak. Sometimes it needs repairs. Sometimes it breaks down. Sometimes parts fall off. Amen. Praise the Lord. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon, longing for that new body, that new body that is not a mortal body, but it's an immortal body. Amen? For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, pay attention to this. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we just said goodbye or so long to our sister Candy. Amen. And uh, her her old house was in the coffin. Amen. But candy wasn't in the coffin. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because the apostle under the unction of the Holy Ghost said, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. That means that when we die, we don't become Casper. Amen. We won't won't become a spook, an apparition. Amen? You're not going to give up this visibility to become invisible. You're just going somewhere else. And you're going to put on your new tabernacle. Amen? It says, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Amen. Sometimes we have toothaches. Sometimes we have headaches. Sometimes we have heartaches. Amen. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Hallelujah. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the deposit, the down payment on eternal life 
is the spirit of God that came into your heart when you humbled yourself and said, Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, forgive me of my sin. I, I believe Jesus died for me. The moment that in sincerity, amen, that you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and repent of your sin, God sends his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit brought you to that point. But then the Holy Spirit breaks through into your spirit. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Now he that have wrought us for the selfsame thing is God who also hath given unto us the earnest. They call it earnest money when you, when you buy a house and you go to negotiate on a house. Uh, you know, before you leave, after you, when you sign that agreement, you got, to, you got to put some earnest money up. Amen? They call it the down payment. Amen? Praise the Lord. Or otherwise, they'll keep showing that house to other people. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God who hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. He, he gave us the deposit, the down payment. And that, that little bit is enough to get us through this life, get us through all the trials and troubles and tribulation and hardships and setbacks and heartaches. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the sixth verse says, therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I mean, that's, that's the blessed hope of every true believer. Amen. Amen. When this old body wears out, when I come down to the last mile of the way, amen, when I come to the end of my journey, amen, lay this old body down, praise the Lord, amen, close my eyes in death, amen, when I close my eyes in death, I don't become like Casper, amen, this body is done with, amen, and like it says up in that third verse, remember that third verse? It says, if so be, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Amen? When this body falls down dead and done, amen, God ain't going to come late. God ain't going to leave you hanging. Amen? He ain't going to leave you out there with nothing flowing in the wind. Amen? Praise the Lord. As soon as this body is done, amen, we shall be clothed upon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. Hallelujah. Boy, this gospel, Lord have mercy. This gospel, if if, if we can by faith embrace the powerful message of hope and love and eternal goodness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and we walk by faith and not by, and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. The moment that you, what did Jesus tell the thief on the cross? Did he say, in a little while, in a few years, amen, when the thief on the cross repented of his sins, amen, when he asked Jesus to have mercy on him, remember me, when you come into your kingdom, he acknowledged, he under the Holy Spirit opened his eyes. He was touched by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says no man can come except the Spirit of God draw him. Amen. And that man, in his dying moments, he recognized that Jesus was the eternal king of an eternal kingdom. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus didn't say after a while, by and by. 
in, in due time, in due process of time, we're supposed to be stepping from time into eternity. The moment, there's no delay, no hang up. Amen. You step from time, in, and listen, we don't fully understand, we don't even understand eternity. Amen. But this is the promise our Lord has given us. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him while we're in this body and when we lay this body down. Amen. For we must, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. Even the saints, when we die, now the saints will not stand in the judgment. We, when you got saved, you escaped the second resurrection. The second re resurrection is when, when the judgment of all those that rejected the gospel, amen, will take place. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into what? Condemnation. Amen? Shall not, not be a part of that second resurrection. Amen? Amen. Everybody in the first resurrection has got it good. Even those that didn't do everything they were supposed to do during their Christian walk. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. As long as you don't deny Christ. As long as, long as you don't go contrary to the word and will of God. Amen. Like I said, you got, you got to hold on eternal life. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, lay hold on eternal life. Amen. He was talking to believers that were still in this body. And he told them, he said, you know, you've got the down payment. Press on. Keep pressing. Amen. Amen. Peter told us, amen, we must earnestly contend for the faith. Amen. That was delivered to the saints. Praise the Lord. It says, Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but we have passed from death. That's why we say I am saved, not I am going to be saved. I am saved. I'm saved now. Yes. Hallelujah. I have, a, I have a, a relationship with the judge with the King of Kings, with the Lord of Lords, with the Creator. Hallelujah. It must have been amazing for the disciples to be walking around the earth, amen, with the Creator who was revealing himself to them incrementally. He couldn't let them, not all at once. Amen. Uh, you know, each miracle they would say, my God, who is this man? Amen. They saw him walk on water. They they saw him speak to a storm and say, peace, be still. They saw him raise the dead. They, they saw him touch the blind and cause them to see. Amen. Praise the Lord. And each time he was revealing to them who he was. He began his ministry at the marriage of Cana. Amen. Where he performed his first miracle. And his first miracle was a miracle of divine creation. Amen. The Bible says that there was a marriage in Cana. The third chapter of John tells us there was a marriage in Cana. And, 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 and Jesus and his disciples were called to the marriage. Now, Bible scholars believe that it must have been some member of Jesus' family. I mean, one of his brothers or one of his sisters that got married. Amen. 
praise, or maybe a cousin, but a family member. Amen. And it says that Mary, Jesus' mother, came to Jesus and she was, you know, concerned. She said, she said, there's no more wine. The wine has run out. And Jesus said, you know, woman, what have I to do with you? He was speaking in terms of the ministry. He was saying, woman, you, 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 you're crossing over into, into, into territory where you shouldn't. Amen? Because she was asking him to do something about this situation. Now, let me explain something about the, the Jewish custom and, and, uh, for, for marriages in that time. Marriage celebrations in ancient Jewish custom lasted for seven days or more. They would have a, they would have a little mini parade where they marched, amen, from the home of the groom to the home of the parents of the bride, amen? And it was a festive, they would be dancing in the streets, amen? Y'all know about dancing in the streets, don't y'all? <laughs> they would be dancing in the streets, amen? But I have a couple books on the traditions and customs of ancient Israel. And it says that these weddings would last for seven days or more, amen. They would go through different phases of celebration, amen. So a lot of wine was needed, amen. Now, the Bible says that Jesus, y'all want to turn over to, y'all want to go over to the second type of chapter of John and take a look at that? Might be more fun that way. Second chapter of John says, And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples. That must have been some, somebody special. It was, I, I believe it was a family member. Amen? For Jesus and his disciples to come. Amen? Praise the Lord. It says, And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. Amen. Maybe they might have been poor and they got more people that turned out. More people showed up than expected. The crowd was great and there was no wine. She didn't want this, this wedding of maybe her daughter or maybe one of her sons or maybe her nephew. She didn't want this wedding to fail. Amen. She seemed like she was kind of like a, a, a co-coordinator here. Amen. So she went to Jesus. You know, troubled about things that humans get troubled about. Amen? And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto him, saith unto the servants. See, his mother, she's, she's like getting involved in, you know, the coordinating, you know? She says to the servants, Whatever he says unto you. <laughs> I love this. She went over to the service. She knew she, knew she had touched Jesus' heart. She's mom. Mom knew. She said, I got through. I got through. She went over to the service and said, whatever he tells you, do it. She felt it. She felt it coming. She knew something was getting ready to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just read on. Verse 5, his mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. A firkin is about nine gallons. Amen? Or a firkin is about three gallons. So two or three uh, firkins would be almost nine gallons. Amen? Amen. That's in each of the six water pots. They were, they were tall water pots. Amen. Amen. Because they had seven days of celebration coming up. Amen. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now. 
and bear to the governor of the feast. The governor of the feast was really the coordinator of the wedding. He was like the wedding coordinator. Amen? And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Amen. Jesus started his ministry off with this great miracle. And what he did was, he did something greater than what, what, what God did through Moses in the Old Testament. Through Moses, God turned water into blood. But now in the New Testament, Jesus kicks off his ministry by turning water into wine. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. But in doing this, see, this wasn't just a, a magician's trick. Amen. This wasn't just a magician's trick. Amen. You can't make wine with nothing but water. Amen. Wine has to be aged. It has to have time for fermentation. And, and during that time, there's a chemical process, a natural reaction that takes place. Amen? It takes years to make wine. Amen? Jesus didn't even, didn't even have to give a command and say, be thou made into wine. Jesus said, just pour water in, in, in those six water pots. Fill them up to the brim. They filled them up. And when, when Jesus, in his mind, Jesus said, it's wine now. He turned water into wine. That was an act of creation. And Jesus was announcing to his disciples, to his mother, to every person that was in the room. He was letting them know. Amen that he was God with us, that this was the power of God. Only God can make wine in a matter of seconds. You got to speed up time. Boom. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. He was building the faith in his disciples that they would need to have. And every miracle that Jesus performed, he was making it known to his disciples that I am who I said I was. I am who the prophet said I was. Amen. The Messiah is here. I am he. Amen. Praise the Lord. Got totally, I have gotten totally sideswiped away from the message that I wanted to preach. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The saints, when you die, you all see, my, my record is on high. My witness is in, in heaven. If you go up into heaven and look up Robert Thornton and they look in the books that will be opened in that great day, it will say concerning Robert Thornton, it will say, forgiven. All of his sins has been forgiven. Hallelujah. Justified. The blood has been applied to him. Hallelujah. That's why we don't have to go to the second resurrection. But the moment that you die, we will be like the thief on the cross that said, Lord, be merciful to me. Remember me when you come into the kingdom. Jesus said, when I come into the kingdom, he said, today, today. Amen. That's, 
That day when he, when he went, to, went to Candy's room, when he went to Sister Hayes' room, when he went to Mom Slaffy's room, when he went to, to my sister Rosemary and, and, uh, and David's, uh, uh, Reverend, Reverend uh, David Thompson's mother, Rosemary. Listen, when I preached Rosemary's funeral, I made a statement. I knew, I knew I was saying the right thing. I said, the Lord came into Rosemary's room a few days ago. I said, and the Lord said, Rosemary, come forth. And Rosemary got up. Yes, she did. And she took a few steps across the room and she turned around and looked at her body. And said, goodbye and good riddance. <laughs> Amen. And she wasn't dragging one leg when she walked. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The moment that the saint of God dies, God will clothe you with your new tabernacle. Mortality will be swallowed up by immortality and we shall be changed. The Bible said we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that when Jesus returns that those that sleep in Jesus will return with him. Yes. Amen. Because they are with him. And when he cracks the sky, they're coming from where he, he's coming from that place where he told the thief, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So the thief went to paradise. Sister Candy went to paradise. Hallelujah. Sister Hayes went to paradise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why, the, that's why the Apostle Paul says, we are confident. Hallelujah. We are confident. Hallelujah. Another place, Paul says, let's not think about the dead saints like we think about other dead people. He said, the Lord shall come with his saints and the saints of Christ he will bring with him. Amen. It says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. That we may receive the things done in the body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Turn to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. 1 Corinthians. We're in 2 Corinthians now. Turn to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. And I'll start at the 11th verse. It says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be revealed or manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. This is why, you, you know, don't worry. If God told you to clean the church, if, if it was in your heart, and, and listen, we got some faithful church cleaners in this church, amen. I don't have to call and say, did you, did you clean the church? No, amen. Whatever, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, amen. When I got saved, when I first got saved, just before the Lord called me to preach, amen, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to be an usher. I told this to God. I said, I want to be an usher. Amen. I used to sit in church and look at them ushers. I said, Lord, I said, you know, they're not standing right. Amen. I said, Lord, I want to be an usher. Amen. And when the Lord, in a dream, revealed to me that he called me to preach, and I, I said, oh, no, I got I to gotta, I gotta get this confirmed. And I was on my way to a service. I said, Lord, when I get to this service, this woman is supposed to be a prophetess. I said, I want you to have her to confirm that you called me to preach the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
And I went to a service that afternoon. My wife and my two kids with me. I only had two kids then. Amen. And this woman was calling people out of the audience and, 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 and was, you know, minister to, ministering to them in the Holy Ghost. And I said, I said, Lord, I want her to call me. Amen. And she got near the end of it and she turned and was walking back to the, up into the pulpit and she didn't call me. And I hung my head and I repeated my commitment to God. I said, God, I told you that I'll be the best usher you ever had. Amen. As I said that, as I spoke these words in my heart, she turned around and said, somebody touched that man. The man that's holding that baby named Robin. <laughs> Amen. He said, somebody touched that, touched that man. I was sitting there, I, I was holding my daughter. And so when they touched me, I gave the baby to Christine. She said, can I pray for you? Come on. When I got up there, then she confirmed the calling. Everything God said in the dream, she said to me right then. But I was just concerned about being an usher. So whatever God puts in your heart to do, do it as unto God. That's your service to God. Amen. But let's, let's get back over here because we're way out of time on Ronald. Amen. So I'm going to try to try to wrap. We might have to bring, finish it up next week, but we'll do the best we can. It says in, in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, and verse 14, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. Amen. And you know what that means? The saints will stand before Jesus not to be judged whether or not you're going to go into the kingdom, but so that Jesus can allocate your reward so that he can dispense what type of reward. It's either going to be good or better or great, or greater. Amen? But we have to stand before him for that. Praise the Lord. If any man's works abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive, receive a war. Those that were faithful in that which is least. The Bible says that what he's going to say to his servants, and he said the same thing to the one that, that uh, only had two talents, that he said to the one with five talents. He said the same words. Well done, thou good and faithful. That's what he wants. Someone that will be obedient, someone that will be faithful, someone that will be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Maybe the work on your job might be in vain. That place may be ready to go out of business. Amen. But what you do for Christ... Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him. He don't want to hear about uh, you, you uh, coaching baseball teams. Amen. He don't want to hear about how much money you gave to the red feather and the red cross. He don't want to hear about you marching to stamp out cancer. Amen. Only what you do for Christ will last. You don't want to hear about how many trophies you got home. Amen. Michael Jordan's trophies will not come up for discussion. Amen. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him will be counted in the end. Only what you do for Christ will last. Amen. Praise God. If any man's works abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Now what does that mean, yet so as by fire? That means this. 
You'll be saved because you didn't stop believing in Jesus. Amen. But you're going to have some regret when you see the rewards being dispensed. Amen. And you're going to be talking about woulda, coulda, shoulda. And, you know, the Bible, the Bible says there'll be no crying in heaven, no tears, no, but there will be some woulda, coulda, shoulda. I wish I woulda. Lord, I wish I would have prayed more. Lord, I wish I would have been more faithful. Lord, I wish I didn't love money so much and would have been given more to serving you and to the work of the Lord and to the poor than for, for my own comfort. The woulda, coulda, shoulda. That's the fire. That's the regret. The Lord didn't say there won't be no regret because he's going to review your service record. He's going to review your steadfastness or your faithfulness or your disobedience. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If any man's works abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Amen. That's why the apostle Peter said, work out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. Whatever you do for Christ, do it with all your heart. Give him your very, very best. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. If, 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 if you only got a, a few things to do for the Lord, amen, volunteer for something else too. Amen. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always engaged. Always active. Amen. Now, Sister Joyce comes and, and, and cleans the church. And nobody ever drafted her daughter, Crystal. But Crystal comes too. Nobody ever drafted Vincent. Said, Vincent, you need to go. No. Vincent comes of his own volition. Amen. Praise God. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Witnessing. Amen. Be committed. Do it as unto God. Be faithful. Let people know. Give your testimony. That's the main thing Jesus said. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to have to finish this next week. Amen. Thank God. Amen. That we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And the place where we go when we die, the place where Candy went when she died, is called paradise. She's in paradise now. Amen. I can say that with authority. She's in paradise now. What, what did Jesus tell the thief today? Was he better than Candy? He was a thief all his life. He was a thief until he got caught and sentenced to die. Amen. But he repented. Amen. And Jesus said to that thief, today you will be with me in paradise paradise hallelujah the saints are not running around like sheets floating in the air ghosts casper amen two saints came back and, and had a conference with jesus upon the mount of olives moses and elijah and they were sort of coordinating the death of jesus they were talking the bible said they were discussing his imminent passion discussing his death amen because they had their new tabernacle they had on their immortal body amen praise the lord i know we don't understand we don't understand eternity it's much too deep for us amen but i believe every bit of it 
I don't have to understand to believe. I, I understand that Jesus is Lord. That's all I need to know. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know that much, amen, you're on the right path. If you know that Jesus is Lord and with God all things are possible and all things are possible to him that believes, amen, God can do great things with your life. Let's all stand on our feet. Hallelujah. God wants to use you, but God needs you to be committed. God don't want nobody to be half-stepping. The Bible says that the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Give your whole heart to Jesus. Don't hold back on Jesus. Jesus didn't hold back anything. God, he, gave up, he gave it all. He let his blood flow. Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Be faithful in your walk with the Lord, in your devotion. Start off by being faithful to meet the Lord every day for a serious period of time. Might, that serious period of time may be 10 minutes. Amen. It may start off being 10 minutes. It may start off being five minutes. But you keep doing it. You keep doing it. Amen. And before you know it, time will have no effect on you when you're praying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you'll grow stronger. This is how he strengthens you. This is how he gives you the victory over all the vicissitudes of life. All the trials of life. Amen. Be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Let's get busy for Jesus because you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Don't spend too much time in things that Jesus is not going to talk to you about in that day. He's not going to talk about the, he's not going to talk about the eagles. He's not going to talk about the 76ers. Amen. The 76ers are doing good. Amen. If, if you're if you're a. a, a a, a, a San, Diego, San Diego Chiefs fan. You might say, well, we got a great team. And your, and your team may do good today in all the football games that they have now on Sunday. You're, some of you can't wait to get out of church so you can go home and, 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 and pull for your team. Amen. But when you stand before the Lord, amen, ain't going to be no sports discussed. Amen. Give him your best. We're going to pray now for anyone that feels a need for prayer. But before we pray for those of us that was healthy enough to come to church, let's pray for those, amen, that have appointments for operations and those that are being treated and, and those that are suffering with various illnesses. And we're still praying for Isabella Fitzgerald and Camilla Fortune. We saw Camilla Fortune at Sister Candy's funeral and she looked good. She was talking good. You know, she said, she said, I felt the prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And Eric Bird, he's, he's battling. He's battling. Just call his name in prayer. Eric Bird. Amen. That's Ronald's brother-in-law. Denise's sister's husband. Eric Bird. He came here and, and we, we had him to stand. Amen. Because we had prayed through other operations he had to go through. He's still battling. Pray for Eric Bird. And we're praying for... Carolyn, Sherry's aunt, the Lord has blessed her that she's gotten a little, little ray of hope. Amen. They may not have to take her other leg. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's in your hands, Lord. But most of all, Lord, I thank you that, that Carolyn is rejoicing in you. Lord God, without any report of any good news, she started rejoicing. And Lord God, I pray for Isabella Fitzgerald, Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless her and encourage her and strengthen her in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your hand be upon the doctors that will attend her case. Let your hand be upon the surgeons that must attend her case. In the name of Jesus, let her come forth with a praise of thanksgiving. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Lord God, our heart and our soul says hallelujah. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling 
and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God who is our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power now henceforth and forever world without end let all the saints of the most high God say hallelujah hallelujah let somebody say amen amen I moved from my old house and I moved